My name is Daniel, I work at Datadog, and I'm about to reveal to you today the terrible secret of serverless. Are you ready? Here we go. We're going to start with a meme. You might remember this one. There is no cloud, it's just someone else's computer. Well, that's from 2016, as I said, we're going to update it for today. There is no serverless, it's just functions as a service, or FAS. All right, now, here's the first big reveal of this presentation. FAS is not magic, all right? Event-driven architecture, anybody remember this? Have you done some ETL or batch processing since like the 1980s? You've probably encountered event-driven architecture. Well, that's the architecture upon which functions as a service are built. There's nothing new under the sun. Resource utilization, still a thing. You don't get to hand wave it away. You still have to think about CPU, you still have to think about memory. And as an added bonus, you now have to think about time. How much time do you need those resources? You're purchasing compute. You're having resources allocated to your jobs. And as anybody who's ever used a mainframe could tell you, that sounds familiar. Speaking of mainframes, guess who's still a player? That's right, IBM. IBM has cloud functions. You can use them today. It's not bad. So does Microsoft. So does Google. So does AWS. Except in AWS's case, uh, they call it Lambda, presumably because someone there is a really big Half-Life fan. Now, the incumbent providers are kind of like dump trucks. For a given workload, for a given size of truck, for a given amount of time you need that truck for, it barely matters who you rent it from. Nonetheless, there are some differences. The hardware that drives those services is going to change from provider to provider. The operating system that the functions run in changes from provider to provider, and crucially, the language you get to write your functions in changes from provider to provider. But in the real world, the hardware, completely opaque. You don't get to choose it. Probably a trade secret. You don't get to know. And the operating system, you don't get to choose it either. Very low configurability in any case. So the crucial differentiator becomes language support. In Amazon, you get JavaScript, and Java, and Python, and C Sharp, some others. And it runs on top of AWS Linux, so that's cool. In Microsoft, you get JavaScript and C-sharp, and F-sharp, and uh, Bash, and a bunch of other stuff, actually, if you're willing to go and support it. In Google, you get JavaScript. In IBM, you get JavaScript, uh, but you also get Docker. So that's kind of fun. Now look, I ran the numbers. For given workloads, for given scope of job, for given what you want to do, there's not a lot of difference between the major providers, all right? What does that mean? Commodity pricing is in effect. In other words, the market has spoken. So how do you pick a provider? Well, if you've got to write it in F sharp, Google's not your friend. And if you're already part of the AWS walled uh, garden and you're very happy there, there's no reason to leave it. And finally, if you're a Microsoft shop writing Microsoft software with a Microsoft IDE for Microsoft customers, don't bother rocking the boat. The important thing to remember here is in serverless, there is no magic, all right? You still have to think about hardware constraints. You still have to think about software constraints. And now, crucially, you have to think about, perhaps more intimately than ever, your workloads, your software, your customer base, all right? That, my friends, is the terrible secret of serverless. There's no hand-waving. Thank you very much.